Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming, and of course, welcome to the new event, the Abattoir of Zia. The new event has released and with it we have a proper pinnacle challenge for the season. And as claimed by the few who played it early back at BlizzCon, it might even be impossible to beat the higher tiers. Now we've had a chance to mess around with it, it would seem these claims are actually far from unreasonable and it seems likely. As you reach towards the tier 10 and above, you're going to find both insane health pools to deal with, but also extremely dangerous enemies, so you somehow need enough DPS while keeping enough survivability and at a certain point that seems impossible for different classes. For me as a necromancer I've started to really feel the difficulty as I push a tier 7 at this point and having watched top players for Sorcerer and Barb who are stopping around tiers 15 right now to go farm lower tiers to farm Glyph XP it's definitely not going to be straightforward. So with that you are going to fail many blood forges and waste the very expensive sigil powder cost to craft these and so you're going to need to know how to maximize your current powder to keep giving it a go to keep progressing and i'm happy to say there's also a clever way to skip tiers you can use with all that you're going to also need a baseline of powder to actually work with so today i'm going to cover how to have enough powder to run these tiers how to skip them and all the important details around that let's start here at the occultist where we are crafting our new Bloodforged Sigils. A tier 1 Bloodforged Sigil is going to cost you a whopping 800 powder just to craft the first one. And remember, if you fail this, that's gone forever. This is just shy double the amount to craft a Nightmare Dungeon tier of 91 to 100, since that's RNG. But thankfully, by completing a Bloodforge, you actually get a hefty amount of Sigil powder as a reward, which is something I expected them not to provide. While we've been clearing Blood Forges of tiers 1 to 10, I've been getting around 1000 to 1500 Sigil Powder a clear. That's more than enough to craft your starting tiers, but of course if you fail all of it's gone. What's interesting here is the default Sigil Powder cost is 800 here, but a tier 2 above that costs 850, tier 3 is 900, 950, 1000, 1050, it goes up in 50s each time you go up a higher tier. So if it's going to keep doing that 15 increase the whole way then a tier 25 is going to cost you at least 2000 sigil powder to even try it all of that's going to be fine assuming you have a nice pile of powder to work with in the first place before this event. If you never really fail your forges, at least the starting ones, then you're gonna be okay. Problem is we only have one life shared by everyone in the group that's in there. So one death and it's over. So you're gonna want a minimum of 800 powder on your character at all times. Worst case scenario, you wanna be always able to craft a sigil tier one so that you can go clear that and get a pile of powder effectively to get back into the higher tiers again. If you don't have that bare minimum of 800 and you mess up and spend it all, you're gonna have to go back Back and do the slower old methods to get back up to 800 again to even begin. In the case that you don't have 800 as the bare minimum, you're going to need normal Nightmare Dungeon Sigils, which you'll need to dismantle via an occultist or whatever. As you can see, the highest level Nightmare Dungeon Sigils are tiers 91 to 100, and anything at those levels is going to provide you with about 130 to 140 Sigil Powder per dismantle. That means you're going to need to dismantle roughly 5 to 6 of these Ancestral Sigils before you can go from, say, 0 to enough powder to even do a tier one blood forge that then lets you farm out low tier blood forges to build up a stack again to get normal sigils then it's the old methods first you'll have want to at least be in a tier 91 or higher so that when you do anything that rewards a sigil you get the highest tier that are worth the most to dismantle after beating at least a tier 91 nightmare dungeon then you can now do other events to get more of them at these high levels that could be whenever a world boss is up go kill that it'll drop a sigil but it could also be open world whispers because when you hand those in after completing it you're always rewarded with a pile of loot and at least one sigil every time. The most effective way to do this then is to do whispers within a blood harvest event, you know the ones introduced in season 2. There's always three whispers in one tight location and they're very easy. Kill X amount of specific enemies, kill two blood seekers and either destroy five enemy structures or save five villagers. The fastest way to clear these out then is to go to the main icon of the harvest where there's three pedestals and activate the special event. It costs 150 blood laws total but you can activate say one pedestal for 50 and then other players around will usually activate the remaining two and that can save you some lures. Ideally then, this blood harvest you're doing will also be stacked up on a normal zone's whispers, meaning you can be doing not just three at the same time, but maybe five or six whispers all at once, which is way more effective. The Blood Harvest is the most valuable time to effort form of Whisper Clearing though, because you're also going to be getting stacks of items, legendaries, and maybe even uniques 
while you're there, on top of the other important resources like packs you need in general. Other than those methods, you could just simply farm Nightmare Deer Dungeons. From that, you get powder, you get the sigil at the end, and you can dismantle that. You might even get an extra sigil through the dungeon itself, because normal mobs can randomly drop them. So ideally, you'll pick a Nightmare Dungeon that's very mob-dense in the objectives that are in there, so you've got a higher chance of a random sigil drop. Ultimately, though, you're going to need at least 800 sigil powder to get a Blood Forge going, and from then on, you try to never again fall below 800. Farm tier 1 blood forges if you have to, they're worth so much more powder than anything else. And the glyph XP is still insane even at a tier 1, so it's all you should really be doing and avoid ever not. In any case, I have some good news. I speculated that you might be able to do with blood forges what you can do with nightmare dungeons. If a friend boosts you through a nightmare dungeon of some high level beyond what you've done so far, you'll complete it with them of course, and then a sigil will drop, but that sigil will be relevant to the level that was just cleared. So even if you've cleared like a tier 10 nightmare dungeon and you just did like a 60 with a friend now you'll be at 60. I speculated it would work the same with blood forges and you could skip it in a similar way. Turns out that was true. By clearing a tier 1 blood forge you'll get a recipe for a tier 2. Now you can craft tier 2 blood forges. But let's say you've only done that and you certainly haven't currently cleared a tier 10 or even crafted one. You don't have the recipe for that. Well if you join a friend in a tier 9, let's say he crafts the tier 9, you clear it successfully, at the end you'll get a recipe for a tier 10, meaning you can of course craft tier 10s now. Anyone can trigger any level of Blood Forge, and anyone in the group can join them, whatever tier they've done or not. The rewards are all going to be the same, whether that's Glyph XP, Sigil Powder, and the recipe at the end. So if you're late to the event, or you're on an ult, or whatever, you can have a friend boost you as far as they can to skip as many tiers as possible. That will save you a huge amount of powder. For me, I've stopped to make this video, right? And Josh is still clearing higher tiers. So once I'm done, I'm going to rejoin him. He'll help me get like a tier I haven't cleared yet, maybe a 9 or something. And I'm going to be able to keep up my progress because of it. Hopefully you can do something similar. On that note, it's also clear that a new trading culture is going to pop up because of this, much like the one we saw with farming. The Glyph XP, the Sigil Powder, these are going to really matter. So you can expect to start seeing people selling carries for higher tiers. The thing is, with only one death and then everyone's out, carrying is actually going to be very hard. For example, at the end of a Blood Forge, the three final bosses, the Blood Seekers, they spawn in immediately to each player. So if there's three of you, no matter where you are, each one of you will get a Blood Seeker spawn next to them. So you're going to have to stick together and prevent the person being carried from dying. So that's why I imagine we're not going to see overly high carries. Once things get settled, I imagine you'll start to see tier 10 carries, maybe, but I wouldn't imagine much higher than that, but we'll see. If you are looking for groups to help you get past some starter tiers by joining their crafted ones or maybe you want to trade for help then maybe consider joining our discord it's linked in the description and we have people helping out trading in there all the time we've been involved with it ourselves to farm durial and help level new alts so we could cover those classes but there you have it that's the main details and things to know for farming powder skipping tiers and the general info we'll see how things stack up but i am greatly relieved that they're rewarding us with a lot of powder for doing this I really thought they'd mess that up and we'd all be farming normal nightmare dungeons for tiny amounts of powder until they hotfixed it or something. If you know anything more useful about the event though that might help, then drop it in the comments. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye